You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block all right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It's Thursday. It's noon central. It's 1 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's blowing up these hair markets? Well, let's find out together, shall we? It is time once again for the option block, what the cool kids call the old OB. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you are binging these days. Can you tell I had a little bit of caffeine before the show? I feel pumped. I feel wired. Let's hope it last throughout the entire show <laughs> or if the rock lobster doesn't drag me down mentally and emotionally by the end of the show <laughs> of course you like what you hear this anything else we got cooking out there uh, then like star comment rate review on whatever platform you're getting it on it's available pretty much everywhere under the sun uh, welcome to all the new folks who've been joining us towards the tail end of last year beginning of this year we love you all including all the new folks at least love to see so many new names floating in and joining us there for the pro q a our first pro q a of the new year just earlier this week, love to see so many new people joining us. So welcome to all the new pro folks as well. If you want to check that out for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. By the way, little birdie telling me that uh, the sweet, sweet panel, I heard some snippets of it the other day. It is sounding pretty good. I won't say who who dared to sneak a recorder into said session to record myself and the flow master and uh, JJ from TD Ameritrade or formerly from TD Ameritrade now IG and of course Greg from the world of crypto who dared to record us all at the midwinter session but hey if you listen to the pro you don't have to fly all the way in you don't have to buy a ticket to the conference you don't have to do all the other crazy stuff you don't have to endure the sub-zero weather that Henry had to endure when he flew in 
uh, because you can get it for yourselves. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Just shh. It's a secret. Don't tell anybody else. That's just for you cool folks who take the plunge over there. A little bit of an extra reward for all you folks. On top of all the other great content. I just saw the other day is over 300 episodes in that pro feed now. My goodness, there's a lot of great content coming for you folks. Uh, if you sign up now, you got weeks worth of listening ahead of you. So enjoy that. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. As you go around the horn, see who's joining us. I made fun of him so I could at least introduce him first. We are joined, of course, in the SIBO hot seat by our old buddy, Mr. Henry Schwartz from SIBO East. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show. Uh, you had good timing, or I should say bad timing last week, because you came in right at the heart of, uh, shall we say, the true winter spirit hit Chicago, uh, because now a week later, it's about 40 to 50 degrees warmer, sir. So you missed out. Well, it was still nice to be there, but yeah, it's it's not so much fun to hit Chicago and land when there's negative temperatures <laughs> out there. I, and I had to run around around the loop a few times, so it w- it was brisk. But uh, now I'm back in New York. It's 50 degrees today, a little rainy. Um, so you know that that's like nothing. And then you you flew out the night before the Bacon Station. You missed the Bacon Station, which is indeed and on top of our panel the best reason to attend Stack. If you don't know the hell I'm talking about, listeners. Follow us on Twitter. I tweeted out a photo of it. It is it is exactly what you think a bacon station would be and also twice as awesome. So uh, check that out over there. Uh, speaking of twice as awesome, he thinks St. Charles is. I guess we'll find out. He is the unclest of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show. Are there any bacon stations in the hinterlands of St. Charles? Can't say I've ever seen a bacon station here, but uh, you know what they say, at least what I say, every day's a holiday, every meal's a feast, regardless of what you're eating. We get to be blessed with meals. We're doing pretty good in this country. And every meal, they also say, is better with bacon, which we turn out now to the hinterlands of Maine, the far distant shores of Maine, where he has to hunt his own wild feral pigs to kill them just for his own bacon. That's how desperate he is to get some bacon. He is the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew G from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. How goes your hunt for the feral pig bacon, sir? Uh, <laughs> going well, I managed, uh, but I have yet to bag one in the wild, sadly. Sadly. You're too busy hunting those those clam pirates to get yourself some feral pig bacon. So we'll we'll give them a chance to go do it, listeners, as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we figure out what the heck is trading out there. And yeah, it's another weird one. You know, after... A rough start to the year for the markets. We've pretty much been in now the last week and change, the same mode we were in for pretty much the entirety of last year, which is pretty much straight up from an underlying perspective. S&P up again today, up about 16 handles. We did break 4,900 since our last show. So I know not too long ago we were talking about, man, we're dancing around 47 half. Looks like maybe we'll start trending. Even the middle of the show looked like we were going to start trending back down to 4,700. Then nope, that same day, bam, right back up to 4,800, then 48 half. Then we hit 4,900. Back below it again right now, but we'll see. The session is, of course, still young. S&P up a third of a percent. Dow up about two-tenths of a percent. NASDAQ up about a third of a percent as well. So kind of a vacillating type of day. You know, we've joked in the past, the market can't be green if Apple is red. Well, now we're putting that to the test with Tesla because uh, they are coming for Tesla today. We talked before about earnings. I think the Rock Lobster called them the good biggies coming up or something like that this week. Well, Tesla, definitely one of those good biggies. I forgot if it was a big biggie or a good biggie. It was one of those two. <laughs> Either way, Tesla taking it on the chin off 26 handles or 12 and a half percent. Well shy of 200 handle again, 181 in change right now. Uh, but the market's still green in spite of all that. So maybe the Apple adage doesn't really extend to Tesla. It makes sense. I mean, it's nowhere near the market cap of Apple, even though trading volume wise, Tesla rules the roost. So kind of an interesting dichotomy out there. Massive red day for Tesla. Yet uh, the NASDAQ and the rest of the indices out there still green, uh, which is kind of fascinating. Also fascinating is the rest of our vol indices, despite the fact that we've mostly rallied since our last show, have kind of remained kind of frothy, kind of kind of resilient. Uh, we were at about a 13 and a half on the Monday show. Guess where we were right when we kicked off the show? Right about a 13 and a half again, listeners. So VIX literally unched on the week, at least so far. So all this upside 
you know, we were talking on the show, I think it was on Vol Views last week as well, about, you know, all this upside, still Vol isn't coming off maybe the way you'd expect, maybe indicating maybe people are looking for some other shoes to drop out there. Maybe they're not fully buying into this rally. Either way, Vol still uh, frothy. And again, we always say it to the end of the day, movement is movement, whether it's to the upside or to the downside. People always forget that as well. So we've had some strong upside movement. So that could also be the reason why VIX is remaining, I won't, I won't say super frothy because 13 and a half isn't super frothy, but resilient around this 13 and a half level. Uh, VVIX at an 81, so still about the same level as Monday's show, up about a point. It was at an 80 on Monday. Uh, VXX, 14 and a half, down about a quarter. You see where I'm going with this, listen. There's a lot of tread and water this week. Uh, UVXY, 760, kind of unched, down about a tenth of a point. SVIX, 39 double. Up about a quarter, so again, kind of treading water. And UVIX, a thing that could move a couple of handles in a few minutes, is only down a quarter. 11 and three quarters right now is where it's trading. So again, a quiet week for UVIX out there. So kind of a weird one out there across the board. Let's go the way we went around the horn. Let's start in the land of Cebo East. Mr. Flowmaster, as you are regretting, missing the bacon station and now the 50 plus degree warmer weather in Chicago. What is catching your eye out there in the markets today, sir? Uh, so it's, I was actually just putting some notes together for a Schwab TV interview I'm going to do right after this podcast. And, you know, we're, we're looking at some pretty interesting markets, right? We're at all time highs for, you know, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And, you know, Russell is not there, although it's rebounded from the really poor performance. But I think the story of the day certainly is Tesla. Uh, you know, that, that's a big earnings move. I think we're pricing in about uh, 10%. So, um, you know, the, to see shares off, uh, you know, 13% almost, 12.5%, that, that, that's greater than expected. We could see five and a half, almost six million contracts traded in there today. And the last record, that would put, put it in the second place, the, the all-time record for Tesla is over seven million contracts. That was actually last January post-earning. So uh, it is, I think I, I, think I put out a, some stats. Tesla was the volume leader for the third year in a row last year. So it, it's uh, clearly dethroned Apple. And, um, you know, all, that's where the focus is. And, and, you know, it's a big move. You know, all this talk about Tesla downside has me firing up a button on the old trade alert machine I haven't fired up in a while, Mr. Flowmaster, the Tesla downside button. Uh, <laughs> that was created just because we were talking so much about those catastrophe puts. You recall That's those? That's right. What days? was it? The 50 strike? They were the like the tens. They were ridiculous. Ten. Yeah, they were okay. the tens and things like that. Uh, looking right now, I wouldn't. These aren't quite as dire, but still pretty bad. Someone bought nearly five thousand of the 90 puts this morning, expiring tomorrow. Oh wait, these are expiring tomorrow for a penny. <laughs> so the, <laughs> these would certainly qualify as a. Near dated catastrophe puts. Imagine if Tesla threatens a 90 handle by tomorrow. Or even comes anywhere close. Uh, wow. So, yeah, there's a few of these. Another 4,300 going up for a penny. Uh, par puts also expiring tomorrow, also trading for a penny. So, yeah, a lot of garbage nonsense puts. 3,000 more than 90s trading for a penny, all going up for tomorrow. So, there you go, listeners. Uh, of all this paper we're talking about in Tesla, it looks like, like four, eight, looks like about close to 20,000 contracts at least are in what I would. I would charitably describe as garbage puts <laughs> going out in one day. So yeah, some of that paper starting to fire up again. It wasn't as near dated in the past. It was usually a year and change out in the January expiration. These are just tomorrow Jan. So a very different beast. Wow. That puts the term garbage puts in a whole different connotation. One day to go cut in half puts. Uh, we've talked about these junk puts maybe performing better than we thought. I don't know if one day is enough to really, to really... <laughs> move the needle i'll have to talk with our resident uh, garbage put expert mr matt i was just talking to him yesterday see if he's back tested the one day 50 percent out of the money put <laughs> i don't think that's going to back test very well uh, let's go out to the land of the feral pigs right now back to the shores of maine first off mr rock lobster how many of the 90 puts in tesla expiring tomorrow did you buy for a penny and then what else is catching your eye out there um, those were really a penny. Yeah. And they bought over 10,000 of them. Oh, and not one nine. Oh, <laughs> no, not one ninety, not one ninety, ninety. <laughs> uh, I was, I was thinking you were just saying, okay, somebody bought the one ninety puts yesterday. And I'm like, how do they, how are they a penny? Okay. But now I'm paying attention. No, no, no. Nine zero. Uh, oh, oh Yeah. Well, you know, I guess if you like those puts, 
Um, I'll tell you what, though, the fact that the 145, well, the the 160s are trading 20,000 contracts. So um, I, I myself have had, did not buy any. I actually closed some put flies yesterday. I didn't make very much money on them. I just didn't want to hold them into the earnings. Um, but uh, some of my students did. Uh, I made a couple of bucks, but nothing, nothing to write home about. Uh, but I, you know, what do you, how do you value, uh, Tesla's a hard thing to value. Um, Cause now it's sort of like, it's almost like Musk is talking it down. Like he's looking for protection against China. He's like, he wants to spin out his AI and robotics. You know, it's almost like uh, I'm feeling like as Tesla, the car company, again, yeah, but Musk is what he is. So like he's, but you're trying to figure out the guy um, and you're like, well, maybe he's done with the EV thing, right? He's kind of moved on. And, and the question is, is how does he extricate the value of all the R&D does in Tesla and bring it into something he has control over? Um, I don't think that's great for Tesla's share price in the short term. Um, but, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not selling the guy, but it feels like he would want, you know, you know, he's got the SpaceX thing going with the satellites and, you know, possibly creating havoc with like AT&T, Verizon and uh, all the other, all the other wireless carriers. So again, very interesting dynamic from Tesla as a point of view where this is kind of how the stock trades, it kind of flies. You know, remember it, it did, it was up what, 20 X from the beginning of, January 2020 until what mid 2022 when it peaked, uh, I think it had a 20 fold increase. So, uh, I mean, I'm just starting to say like the EV thing might be getting a little cold and a little difficult uh, to navigate at this point. So, we'll we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't. Uh, I I think though it does probably lose a little more value. That's all I would say with the Tesla thing. So as far as buying those out of the money puts, you know, out of 45 volatility is, I think this is about as low as the vol. Yeah. Like we're getting, uh, we're getting kind of down there. So, I mean, I don't, the options are not really expensive, but Tesla tends to trade at a higher vol when it's rallying. So I, I thought definitely on my radar scheme for a new trade, I just haven't done anything um, I haven't done anything, uh, besides that little, uh, uh, put fly that I had on. Cause I just, I thought the EV thing is starting to go away just a little, which was, which obviously is harder for Tesla. Is it going away to uh, Jan nineties by tomorrow? Maybe, uh, is, is it going away that hard, <laughs> that fast? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's going that, I don't think it's going that fast. Um, but you know, you never know. These might get added to one of my uh, trade of the year contenders. These are just fun. These are fun for all sorts of the wrong reasons. I, I think it's a good list for you to keep. <laughs> Someone has to track this nonsense. Why not us, listeners? So, yeah, that's a, that's a fun one. That's a good one. We'll keep that in our back pocket out there. By the way, people forget. You know, everyone's wringing their hands. Tesla down 20 handles to 181. It was right around 100 bucks about exactly a year ago. So it still it still could easily go back to that level. People tend to they have such short term memories. They oh what a dire sell off back to one eighty and change. It was one hundred bucks close to it. People were writing all these articles about Tesla. The end was there, and then more than doubled post that. So yeah, a lot of a lot of craziness afoot. Let's go out to the land of St. Charles, where Uncle Mike never met a penny fifty percent plus out of the money put that he didn't want to buy, and he can't stop buying these things. Mister Uncle Mike, how many of these uh, Tesla? Puts did you buy for a penny? And then what else is catching your eye out there, sir? Oh, in the millions. I mean, how can you how can you go wrong with penny options? Am I right? I mean, especially with a day to go. I mean, that's just free, free money if ever I saw. <laughs> All right. And uh, oh, that's the authorities knocking on my door for saying such things. So sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, with this market right now, it's like we we make the run for the all time highs. On uh, the S and P, I got to say my thing the other day, but um, it's um, at a point right now to where I don't think I can say it today because we had the high yesterday, unfortunately. So um, 
nonetheless, we're still knocking on the door of the 4,900 level, and uh, we'll actually see if we can <clears throat> break through it, and possibly I can give my trademark saying again on Monday, perhaps. Uh, in terms of some things that are catching my eye for the day-to-day, um, within the sectors, uh, we actually don't have um, – it's fairly broad based with what we're looking at it. We do have technology up roughly 1% on the day. Uh, we do have uh, energy up 0.8% on the day, just kind of looking at it. Uh, discretionaries are down one and a half percent. So it's balancing out, and but it's not overall what I would call a tech driven rally or whatever the case may be. And let's just be honest with ourselves, we're up 0.4% on the day. It's not really a, a major rally at all anyway. Uh, so we do have that. Uh, in terms of some other things with which I'm seeing in the bond market, we are getting some buyers again with it. Uh, but once again, not a ton of buyers. And uh, it'll just be interesting to see if this is where bonds just want to sit here for a while, or is there a reason to believe that they could go up uh, with buyers coming in? And uh, we'll just kind of have to wait and see with everything. Uh, some other things with which I'm seeing uh, that are catching my eye or lighting up my tape, if you will. Uh, of course, Netflix with a big day yesterday, and uh, that's up roughly two percent on the day to day. Uh, just the fact I think that there must be something about the the WWE having something to do with Netflix. I mean, uh, how can you possibly go wrong when you make a deal with Vince McMahon, yeah, right? WWE <laughs> making headlines two news cycles in a row, one of them good, one of them pretty horrible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot going on. Then Microsoft is above the 400 level now, so that's definitely something of note that's uh, catching my eye. And uh, just continuing to watch stuff go up and hope it goes up quicker, obviously. I want more money right now and quicker. And <laughs> That's what I'm seeing today. Give the man more money quicker, Markets. What are you doing? This 50% upside for AI last year, not enough for Uncle Mike's taste. He needs more listeners. Yeah, funny about how uh, WWE very much driving the, the narrative for the last couple of sessions. Netflix choosing to wait till the day of their earnings to announce their big deal. TKO stock also shooting up quite a bit off the news. Kind of came off the highs. It was threatening nearly 100, then they kind of came back down on it. And then, of course, all the... Uh, the Vince fun popping off today. <laughs> Not helping anything either out there. Man, just a uh, great guy to have front and center ringing the bell for you when you know this stuff is swirling around him. Kind of a not the best choice. Let's just put it that way. Uh, let's keep on rolling. Let's see if our markets are the best choice. By the way, speaking of best choices, if you don't like those Jan 90 puts expiring tomorrow in Tesla, allow me to present to you the June 50s trading for about 11 cents earlier this morning as well let's see how many of those bad boys did they buy they bought looks like about three thousand of those for around 11 cents so you know 90 by tomorrow maybe a little bit too quick for you how about 50 by june listeners trading 11 cents is the 50 strike the new catastrophe put in tesla i don't know i'll put it out there to you to find out i haven't done my search in a while to see if the for a long time the number one open interest contract in tesla options was around the you know, the 10 strike, <laughs> the puts, and sometimes the ones. Uh, so I don't think we're quite there anymore, but still intriguing stuff. Let's see if things are intriguing out there in the markets today from a volume perspective. The answer is kind of, again, depends where you look. If you start in VIX, as we always do, the answer is not really much of anything. 143,000 contracts only on the day. So VIX is shrugging its shoulders to all this noise. They're like, Tesla, who cares? 649,000 is the ADV right now. So right halfway around where it was not too long ago, about 50K above it, 50K below the 700K where it was not too long ago as well. So kind of hanging out right in the middle of the range it's been in of late from an ADV perspective. SPY, though, looking pretty robust, 5.2 million contracts on the day. That's roughly a million more than we expect this time of the day. Uh, ADV, 8.15 million. So it looks like a pretty robust day for SPY. Uh, the S, 1.7 million. That's about what we expect this time of day in this new Post zero DTE environment. Uh, the ADV about three and a quarter million out there. Uh, small caps, 882,000. So they're well on their way. They're hitting their ADV of 1.32 million. By the way, we didn't do our little uh, a little checkup with our small cap friends. Let's see what they're up to. Up about half a percent today, listeners. So small caps looking robust today. 
And the Qs, 2.2 million, the ADB, 3.5 million. That's about exactly where we expect the Qs to be, too. They put up all this, all these numbers early on in the session. Then they spend the rest of the day getting that last million or so contracts. Kind of a, a weird bit of flow, but it seems to work for the Qs. Let's go out to the top 10 most active listeners. Let's see. Is it a banger day for the single names? You know, it's earnings season, so we should expect a little bit of a higher bar. And that's pretty much what we're getting. Right now, it costs you 332,000 contracts to break into the top 10. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's more robust than we've seen it in quite some time. But that gets it to our old friends, American Airlines, up nearly a buck and a half today, trading 1540, so a little over 10% for them. So a nice pop for American Airlines. 52 week high was 19 bucks, and the low was 10 bucks. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're right pretty much a little bit north of the halfway point in that range on the year. And again, good for 332,000 contracts on the tape, listeners. Number nine. Our former friends across the show, I'm not sure if they've officially moved yet or not, but there are still some, there is still some Boeing stuff on the building across the street. Uh, but of course, Boeing, ticker symbol BA, 364,000 contracts for number nine, uh, 200 and a half bucks off 13 and three quarters. The only time you see Boeing in these, in these top 10 listeners are when either it's earnings day or when something horrible is happening in the airline side and we're still dealing with the fallout from that door plug popping off on the door. So uh, yeah, the stock taking another hit off nearly 14 bucks today. Not quite at its 52 week low of 176 and a quarter, but right around 24 bucks north of it right now. So also not that pretty far away from its 52 week high of 267 and a half. So yeah, it's been a rough, a rough couple of weeks here for Boeing, as you might expect. They did bounce off 200 back on Jan 16th. They tried to rally it back. They got up to about 215 again before crushing it right back down to 200. So whatever legs people thought Boeing had, they got cut off again out here. Listen, let's go out to a number a number eight, I should say. My old stomping grounds, Intel, 372,000 contracts. Intel up about 20 cents, trading right around 49 and a quarter. That's exactly 49.28, actually. It's exactly $2 below its 52-week high of 51. 28 out there so looking pretty good for intel today number seven our old friend alphabet man just a little over a year ago we used to joke if alphabet's in the top 10 you know it's a snoozer and then bam here comes ai out of nowhere listeners and now all of a sudden alphabet is sexy 382,000 for number seven alphabet 151 38 up 268 or about 1.8 percent and they're about a buck and a half away from their 52 week high of a little bit north of 153 and again good for number seven number six I haven't seen apple this far down in quite some time. Apple, number six, only 430,000 contracts. Apple kind of uh, unched on the day, 140, excuse me, 194 and a half. They got up to, looks like as high as 196 and a quarter this morning. So they were getting back within spitting distance of their all-time high. Then they kind of gave it back up again. Uh, so intriguing stuff. If Apple continues to sell off, that might drag us back down in the, in the broad equities. But for now, good for number six, 430,000 contracts. Keeping it in the A, tech names for number five, the Amazonians, 440,000 contracts. Uh, 157 and a third, up about half a buck today. They're about a buck and change below their 52-week high of 158 and about a half. And again, good for 440,000 contracts today. Number four, it's PayPal, 510,000 contracts. They're revamping out there. Oh, they, they whispered the magic letters as well, AI. <laughs> but you know what? Doesn't seem to be enough. Uh, the stock's selling off two bucks, trading 61 right now. Uh, they're a 52 week high of 88.62, 52 week low of 50 and a quarter. So they're much closer to the latter than the former. So yeah, it doesn't look like the uh, the AI came soon enough for this one out here, but it's good for number four today. A uh, number three, speaking of AI, it's Nvidia listeners. Nvidia 998,000 contracts today. So a banger volume day for them. 61471, up about a buck. <laughs> This chart, the 52-week low, 189 and a half. 52-week high, 628 and a half. My goodness, the power of AI right there, listeners. 998,000. Number two, right above it. Once again, AMD saying, hold my bear. 1.08 million contracts for them. 179.85, up about a buck and a half for them. Uh, they're about five bucks away from their 52-week high of 184.92. And then the number one, you don't need me to tell you what number one is today, listeners. It's Tesla off to the races, three and a half million contracts, roughly. That's a banger. That's more than we've seen from them in quite some time. I think the Flowmaster said the high for them was seven million. Uh, we'll have to check in on that with the Flowmaster again. But obviously, they're putting up some numbers as they're selling off roughly 26 handles right now, 
hanging out right around 182. We already told you about how many tens of thousands of nonsense puts are going up out there. Clearly with three and a half million contracts, you got some room for some nonsense. <laughs> uh, in terms of earnings, we already said it's a banger week. Yesterday, of course, we had Tesla, IBM, and AT&T. Tuesday, Verizon, 3M, GE, J&J, &J, and good old Netflix announcing their big deal with WWE. The two of them really rallying off that news. That was kind of interesting. Uh, Thursday, American Airlines. We have Alaska Airlines. They have the door popping out infamy. Uh, Southwest Airlines, Intel, uh, and a whole bunch of uh, credit cards. And then uh, tomorrow, speaking of credit cards, we got Amex tomorrow. We got, looks like, updated hot off the presses, earnings move, earnings move result, earnings season. Let's go straight to Tesla, because the Flowmaster was just talking about them. Uh, they were going into their announcement, 207.83. They were pricing in 7.2%. As of the time we ran this report, which was about a couple hours ago, it was nine. They had moved 9.3%. Obviously, they have moved more than that now. They're off 12.5%. So, dramatically outperforming their straddle, which is interesting because I was just talking to Matt about these numbers yesterday. And he was kind of noticing what I've been noticing that after last cycle, where everyone was pricing in a ton of extra juice and they were mostly hitting those numbers, the season ended out right around 119% after all. This cycle is completely the opposite. People are pricing in a heck of a lot less juice. And at least for Tesla's blowing it out, but the other ones are kind of coming in line. Well, we got American Airlines, they're pricing in 5.2%. They delivered about 7.2% as well. And then IBM, only 4.2%, and they delivered 10.3%. So on the tech side and airline side, they were out, they were outperforming. We'll have to keep an eye on the rest of the numbers, listen, to see if that trend continues. Right, here goes Southwest. Southwest was pricing in 5.6%. They popped off before the bell this morning, only delivering about 1.7%. So does seem like the lion's share outside of those big tech names we were just talking about, the lion's share of these names we're tracking here are underperforming from an earnings vol perspective. Like Southwest Airlines was 69% lower than what they were pricing in from a vol perspective. So yeah, some of these are really, uh, really starting to squeeze the vol, which is fascinating in and of itself. We got Intel after the bell today. Uh, they're, priced, they're trading 49 bucks even. They're pricing in three and three quarters. In the past, they moved about three and a half bucks. So a little bit extra juice, but nothing to write home about. We'll see if that is merited uh, after the bell today. Uh, you can see all the rest of these for yourselves, including GM coming up next week, uh, EA coming up next week. You know where to go to find all this. Alphabet next week, uh, all kinds of stuff. Microsoft, theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab. Boeing next week as well. A lot of names. We can spend the whole rest of the show going through these listeners, but we won't. We'll keep on going. We'll unleash the flow master because it's time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, let's get weird. Let's get wild. Uh, always love when the Flowmaster joins us because he throws us fun curveballs. Like, for example, Mr. Flowmaster, I am very familiar with eBay, but I am not familiar with its evil twin, Seabay. <laughs> Ticker symbol C-B-A-Y, C -B -A -Y, easy for me to say. Uh, this is actually because it's Simabay Therapeutics, listeners. This is obviously a biotech. Uh, they're coming out of California. It looks like they have, they have subsidiaries all over the globe. Uh, trading 22 and three quarters off about 15 cents today. On the year, let's see, a year, oh, good year for them. A year ago was $7.80, and then they've pretty much been nothing but shooting straight up. <laughs> the high for the year is actually 25 and about a third. That was a few weeks ago, so they come off the highs, but still up almost 200% on the year. So this is a classic biotech here, stock, looking, they have a breakthrough therapy they came out with. They don't say for therapy for what, though. Interesting stuff. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what caught your eye out here in my new favorite eBay competitor, Seabay? Exactly. At least it's easy to remember. Uh, so this is an interesting one. And I'll tell you, I have a, a I, I really do like directional option flow when it comes to biotechs because um, you see some smart traders taking advantage of, you know, kind of the, the features of, of options, you know, the leverage and the convexity. And so this is a really simple one. This is a, a 
a buyer of 2200 of the April 30 calls. So these have a little little ways to go. Uh, you know, you got almost two months uh, plus until they expire. But this buyer paid 68 to 69 cents for 2200 April 30 calls. Stock was around 2280. Uh, stock's pretty much still there. hasn't really done very much. Uh, you know, it's way above the average daily volume. Uh, you know, and in fact, I, I went and looked back to see if if this thing ever kind of heats up. And there actually were some busy days in early January. So January third and second were also pretty heavy. That's when the stock was at twenty two ninety nine, almost twenty three. Stock did get up to twenty four and a half, uh, and then kind of go sideways for a while. So, um, you know, the the this attention to drug trials. And I don't know what, what these guys have, but I assume they have something um, in trials. That's what biotechs do. And so, you know, you see some interesting, um, you know, basically indirect betting on the outcome of trials. And, you know, the medical professionals can pay close attention to those trials. And there's a little bit of, um, you know, people, certain professionals and, and people with a lot of experience can can figure out things that you know, kind of the rest of us can't. So that that's really why I like biotech, and it's just a just a bullish uh, you know bullish block in in CBay. Everybody loves CBay. By the way, they are advancing life changing treatments for patients with primary biliary cholangitis. So there you go, the disease okay. everyone wants them to cure, PBC. Get rid of PBC. No one likes PBC. Uh, there, so there you go. That's what they're working on. Obviously, it's been working well for them. And, and dare I say, you know, we joke about these Tesla catastrophe puts me up fun with a lot of those. But dare I say it, out of the money call paper and biotechs was kind of the reason this segment was invented. That's the paper everybody knows and loves. <laughs> That's what they're coming to the dance for. Upside calls and biotechs. So I'm glad you can deliver for them today, Mr. Flowmaster. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on your new favorite eBay competitor, Seabay? And do you too want to win the fight against uh, PBC, sir? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would like to win the fight. I guess that's a, it's a, it's, it sounds like something very serious, you know? Yeah, it has an acronym. It must be bad. Uh, you know, also too, it does win the, uh, the Seabay award for, um, uh interesting uh interesting uh name that is very close to another name so now also i i would say when you know when henry says he likes the the flow here cuz the biotech thing is like okay somebody knows what this drug is or da 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 and you know you always have these biotech geeks that seem to know all this stuff um so this is one of those where you're like okay i um I think the guy that's buying all the options might have a good idea. But again, this is a stocks 22 and they're buying the April 30. I mean, <laughs> for a biotech, I don't even think that's not, it's an unreasonable trade to be quite honest. Uh, and clearly they wanted them. So uh, is this is also, is this a case where they're putting the trade back in the guy's face? So it does pass our sniff test. So, which historically has been quite good, by the way. Um, so they paid, they paid through the offer and now they are 70 cent bid. So I was going to say that's, that's as, that's as good as good as, as good of a start as you would want for, if you're a call buyer to, uh, to go greeny on the first day. Yeah, that's a long way to go. The 30 strike by April, but it is a biotech. So, and it has shown the propensity to make some moves in the past. Uh, listeners, you like these 68, almost 69 cents paying through the offer, about a 57 vol of uh, the OI on the strike before this trade 34. So clearly opening new paper out here, a uh, swing in for the upsides. The only way you could describe it for good old Seabay out here, a newcomer. Got to keep an eye on this one. And then speaking of newcomers, Mr. Flowmaster, your next one up and comer. I'm not very familiar with it. I think you pronounce it spy. Is that correct? Uh, tell our listeners, what did you spot in this uh, up and coming new name, sir? <clears throat> oh, yeah. So we, today we're going with one easy one, right, which is just a call buyer. And then one that's a, that's a little funkier, but it is in a ticker that I think everybody uh, certainly that's listening has heard of, which is spies, the S&P 500 ETF. Uh, it is you know the most active product in terms of volume. Uh, it trades about, I think, 13 million contracts a day. No, just eight, eight and a half million contracts a day. But um, the so this is a funky one, though, because last Friday what we saw was a, a mega butterfly. So put butterfly, uh, 
people can Google it, I guess, but it's effectively, uh, you know, one vertical spread against another vertical spread. And the, the bet, if you buy the thing, is that it ends up at the very center center strike. Okay. It's a very specific bet. Uh, the payoff can be huge if you're right. Uh, but the likelihood of being exactly right is incredibly small. So last uh, Friday, we saw the March 1st expiration, 395, 410, 415 put fly trade, 70,000 times for eight cents. So that, and that was, a, that was a customer seller. And so what that means is the customer is basically short the 410, 415 put spread, and he happens to own the 395, 410 put spread. So if the market goes down beyond 395, it's worthless. If we expire above 415, it's also worthless. And at 410, it's worth five bucks. And so this was sold for eight cents. It's all opening. And if it were to expire at that center strike, it'd be worth about a hundred million dollars. Uh, they only took in eight cents those 70,000 times. So it's a very interesting, um, uh, risk reward, uh, in uh, an enormous amount of risk for a pretty small r reward. And then on top of that, there's usually commissions are being paid. Um, so that I wrote that up last week. And then there's another one yesterday, awfully similar. I think it's gotta be the same trader. And this one is, is a hundred thousand, by 200,000 by 100,000 of the March 400, 415, 430 put fly, the regular March 15th expiration. So same deal. It looks like a seller. This time they only got, uh, I think they only got four cents for it. Uh, and it opened as well. So it, 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 it reminds me of, uh, um, you know, we were watching some, some zero dates, zero DT SPX trades last year. Uh, you know, there was a lot of flow going on and people are using that product for all sorts of different reasons. But there was also you know, some of these big vertical spreads trading for a nickel uh, periodically and they and they were big. And, and it was one of those situations you're like, well, there's a nickel credit to the seller, but the risk is pretty huge, right? If it's 10 or 15 handles wide. So it just kind of it echoes of that. Um, a very specific trade, um, a very high risk reward ratio. Yeah, four cents for that second one. That's that's my favorite fly. We have coined a new a new term though, the mega fly. Mr. Rock Lobster, are you down with a little bit of spy mega fly action, sir? Um <laughs> This trade boggles my mind. Why the heck would you put this trade on? Am I am I missing something? On this, juicy. So I don't. I don't think you're missing anything. Juicing, for, juicy <laughs> four cents. What more do you need? Like, uh, okay, you know, I, I guess, <laughs> I guess you could say the risk is limited <laughs> to a hundred million dollars <laughs> to take in five hundred and sixty dollars. Like, I, how does this? I, I don't know. I'm totally like Henry. Am I, how does this make money ever? Well, I mean, is if, it a if they get Henry, away with like, it? Is this all opening? It's all opening. If they get away with it, they they keep 400 grand, right, on that size. But oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. They get away with 400 thousand. Okay, so yeah, I because so when you said 560 dollars in premium, I thought they sold it for nothing. So they got they oh. taken eight cents. What a hundred thousand times. Uh, the one today is four. It, the one yesterday was four cents a hundred thousand times. The one okay. last week was a little bit more, but a little smaller size. But yeah, they, they, okay. they, they, so they seem they to be like comfortable. Four hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. Big. So I, I mean, I could see that. I mean, uh, you know, that's your grandma's, that's your, that's your girlfriend's Ferrari. But man, expensive. I, you know, I, it's probably right in the same ballpark as the risk on some of the other line. I just, this to me looks. Like a line in the sand trade, I just I misunderstood on the four cents on it. I thought I thought they were getting only five hundred and sixty dollars in premium total. I'm like, what? <laughs> Still, the four cents okay. is not exactly anything to write home about, you know. Uh, right, it, you know, it's it's and and I you know and I guess they're they're saying, wow, this is a guaranteed four cents. Um, this is the kind of trade you have to show like Chris Sedile on uh, from Ambrose, you know. When, or uh, or or uh, or the croissant man, you know, Jim Cross Car Carson. Um, mm. But this is where people come in and they get all really confident and they just start doing trades like this. Is this where, the fund that has more dollars than cents, perhaps? You know, like, I, I, you know what? There's, I think that's that's the only way. But so that's a 
that is that's also a reason why that's how vol goes to zero because all of a sudden somebody's got you know a hundred thousand flies for four cents uh, I'm, I'm sure they could trade they could sell some against that and satisfy some risk managers so um, but that's how, you know, that's how Vol starts to get into single digits or, you know, VIX drops below 12 when there's the confidence to sell a trade like that, which, you know, um, we can speculate on what we think the Fed's going to do or whatever, but that's, it's almost like somebody knows what the Fed's going to do when you do that trade, but, uh, maybe they just have keen insight into what's going on. I just love the idea of some fund sitting on a boatload of money, and they said, what do you want to do with it? Like, ah, how about sell a fly, mega fly, for four cents? <laughs> That's the only thing they could come up with to put all this capital to work with. Maybe, uh, yeah. What's, what's, the, uh, what's the return on the 100 yeah. mil? Because the you're... margin must be fairly big on that. <laughs> return stuff. that capital to your investors. I think they could do something better with it than the four cents for this mega fly. But I digress as we keep on rolling and go into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, listeners, let's do it. Let's get into your mail, your questions, your comments, your insights that you share with us all the time on our various questions and polls. Uh, last week, we asked you folks... You know, new trading year, which option strategy do you anticipate using the most in this new year? We tried to squeeze as many as we could into four buckets. Gave you long calls, long puts or verticals, covered calls, short puts or verticals, straddles, strangles and flies, or calendars and diagonals. And you folks are looking forward to paying for some primo this year. Long calls, long puts and verticals taking it 39.5%. Followed by number two, going the other way, selling some premium, 31.6% for covered calls, short puts, and verticals. 21.1% uh, for the old straddles, strangles, and butterflies. We didn't have room to put mega flies in there, listeners, but that's certainly we would have if we had enough space for that. And then only 7.9% going the calendar and diagonal route, which I do believe was Uncle Mike's choice. So he was not feeling the spirit of of our audience last week. Let's give him another chance to redeem himself, shall we, listeners? Our question this week, not an area that he plays in very often, but he does play in the old S&P realm, so he's trading vol whether he wants to admit it or not. But we asked you folks right now, what is your preferred way to trade broad market volatility? Again, gave you four buckets to go through. Good old, plain old SPX or SPY options. You just like buying those and maybe hedging them, maybe not trading your vol that way. Or you're going to go the VIX route, your VIX options and your VIX futures. Or maybe you prefer yourself a little bit of straightforward vol ETPs like your VXXs. Or maybe you like to get a little fancy, a little exotic with some inverse or levered vol ETPs like your UVXYs and all of that fun I got a feeling somebody is uh, is gumming up our numbers here, looking at the results. I won't say who, but you know who you are out there, listeners. He may or may not have been on Vol Views with us recently. But uh, let's go to Uncle Mike first. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, uh, what is your choice if you have one? I think you're probably going to vote for yourself. I'm going to write you in already for the SPX spy options. More importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for? How are they slinging some Vol this year, sir? Well, as much as I'd like to pick the inverse uh, vol, the inverse <laughs> levered vol ETP. Why not? Go for it. It's fun. What's that? I said, why not? Go for it. They're fun. Have fun. Yeah, I, they do sound like a lot of fun, but uh, unfortunately, I have to keep to my objectives and uh, I will stay in the SPY realm, as you said. But you know what? I'll give that one to the audience. I think they're looking to have some fun this year. So I will go with inverse Levered Vol ETPs for the audience. All right. Interesting. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, same question for you, sir. Uh, what is your preferred way to sling some Vol? I'm guessing you're a VIX guy, but you never know. And then B, which way do you think our audience is going? Uh, I do prefer, uh, I actually really prefer SPX. It's, it's the liquidity in there is so, so extremely high that you can, you can, do whatever you want, and it doesn't feel like there's really any transaction cost to, to experience. Uh, I would think that our I, I bet our, our I bet our listeners are 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 also using SPX and SPY more more so than the VIX products. All right, Mister Mister Rock Lobster, the last word is yours, sir. Which way are you going? 
Are you going the ETPs? Are you going the straight VIX? Are you going maybe some S and P? And which way do you think our audience is going? Um, I I use VIX and SPX combination. That has worked the best for me personally. Um, that is not a I choice. Think sir. The audience. I know I'm cheating, but I like the two of them. So that's what I like. I mean, um, uh, and uh, and I think the audience is just going to plain old SPX spy. That's what I think. All right. We had some reasonable results in our poll. Then I won't say who struck in the intervening couple of hours, and he's gumming up the works here. S&P options were taking it. They were running away with it. And then our old buddy, Mr. Jim Carroll, a.k.a. the captain of the UVXY Defense Force, started summoning his legions to the poll. He, he raised the banner for UVXY. And now, as a result, right now, inverse or levered ETPs are moving into the poll position 41.4%. So uh, Jim Carroll sicking his UVXY minions on our poll. That guy, I, I told him he was the captain of the UVXY Defense Force last week, and he laughed it off. He said, Peshaw, that's not me. And then look what he does. He completely distorts our results in favor of his favorite product. So that guy, I need to have a talking with Mr. Vixologist. So right now, Uncle Mike's favorite, inverse levered ETP staking it. I smell the hand of skullduggery at work here, listeners. Followed by number two, Plain old SPX and SPY options, 36.2%. They were number one until a couple hours ago. And then uh, only 15.5% go on the VIX route. That's kind of interesting. And then uh, your straight plain vanilla vol ETPs like VXX, bringing up the rear, 6.9%. Get out there and vote. If you want to fight back against the UVXY Defense Force, you want to stake your flag in, I don't know, VIX or VXX or SPX, whatever else floats your boat, get out there, add options. You've got about a day and a half or so left to make your voice heard, listeners, as we keep going and go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, listeners, let's go around the block while I recover from this blatant Vol skullduggery and poll manipulation. Let's go out to uh, the uncle of Mike's first. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until the Monday episode? 4,900 laser focused. Um, I think that's a very key number for us with where we are with the SPX and uh, hoping to see a new all time high. The man's not satisfied until he has a new all time high every freaking day. So give it to him, listen. Otherwise, we have to just listen to him every day, and that's. That's painful for all of us. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance next Thursday? You know, it's funny. So when when um, when we Dow crossed 38,000 on um, Tuesday, I think, and that reminded me when we were independent back uh, about 10 years ago, we were selling Dow 15,000 hats that we designed on Zazzle or something and put up <laughs> on a little web store. We sold a bunch of those hats. It was not quite as exciting as the Dow 10K, but it does kind of make you, make you step back and go, wow, that's a pretty big move. Uh, you know, and it has been a decade or so, but still, it's a big move. Now, Bitcoin back then was around 200 bucks too, so... Um, take that as you will. Uh, I'm going to be watching earnings. You know, we have Intel. We have we have a handful uh, of, of big names over the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, and if, if things are as exciting as they've been with uh, Netflix and Tesla, then it's going to be a, a very busy couple of weeks. And Mr. Flowmaster, la- excuse me, Mr. Rock Lobster, uh, last word for you. So what are you keeping an eye on until the Monday show? Well, uh, 40, I think 4,900. Yeah, we've touched it. Uh, again, we're still... Technically, we're at a closing all-time. We're at a closing high right now. Um, it would be a high close here, although we were up a lot more earlier today. And uh, talk about bringing something back from the dead, IBM. Uh, so that might be something good for oddities, but it's almost two hundred bucks. It hasn't been that high in like for a million years, I don't think. So um, anyway, because they whispered the magic word. So I'm, I am looking at that. Um, you know, and how high can some of these stocks go? Woohoo! It makes me nervous whenever the Rock Lobster is this giddy, listeners. Sold all stocks, if he's this optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that music means we've come to the end. I know the Flow Master has to skedaddle. He has to go slum it on some lesser network, so let's let him go do that, listeners. Mr. Flow Master, sir, 
Where should folks go if they want to check out all of your Flowmaster goodies, including maybe some reinvigorated Tesla downside puts, sir? Well, look for me on Schwab TV today at about 3 o'clock New York time. And then SIBO.com um, slash RMA for risk and market analytics. It's where I have all the good stuff, and we're happy to set people up with trials and show you the magic. There you go. See the magic for yourselves. SIBO.com slash RMA. Allow me to recommend the Tesla downside scan if you do set it up. It's, it's some pretty fun info there. <laughs> all right. And Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, where should folks go if they want more Option Pit goodness in their life. Optionpit.com. Uh, I'm going to be launching a little, a little, uh, a kind of a new addendum to my OP mentoring product. Uh, what we'll call like the ratio married put. Uh, it will. It's a just a trade. You know, it's a trade that allows you to um, trade with confidence at all time highs. Um, so you're not there just. Um, you know, holding you know what in the wind. So um, uh, that yeah, look for that soon. And eight 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 trade zero one, you get ten percent off if you say you heard it from this here show. There you go. And last but not least, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, where should folks go if they want more Uncle Mike in their lives? Follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa T O S A W, and uh, check out my website stcharleswealth.com. There you go. A lot of great content, a lot of great info there in between his appearances on this fine program. And listeners, a little birdie tell me maybe one of these two uh, crazy knuckleheads may be running the show on the program on Monday. So look forward to a train wreck on Monday's OB. We got a lot more to come before then, though. I'll be back in a little bit uh, with the folks from Prosper Trading Academy joining me on the CME hot seat in a little bit to break down all the futures options fun going on over there on Twifo. That'll be in a little bit for all you listening live. Of course, uh, on demand for all you on demand folks in a little bit later today. Tomorrow, Vol Views. Maybe I'll give Mr. Bixologist a virtual hard time for gumming up our poll with his blatant skullduggery. And then, of course, after that, coming back again for Options Oddities. Maybe we'll talk Beamer. Maybe we'll talk a whole bunch of fun. You never know what's going to make it on good old Options Oddities. That's why you got to check it out over there, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Then when the cat's away, the crazies will play. So we'll see what happens on Monday's episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. <laughs>